So we're starting with Laura in the L position. We got the hips stacked, we got the shoulders stacked. We're going to move her into a, a C position, which is uh, elbows and knees together, a roundness of the spine. And we've, we've done this work, this is about lengthening the spine. It is the fetal position, so this, this is how, uh, how the fetus lay. So now to develop some of the secondary curves, we, we're going to add some, some movement to this. So now Laura's going to turn onto her stomach and hands under the forehead first. Yeah, hands on the forehead, so straight in, yeah. So this is the first, first position where we start getting some curve in the back. You know, it's actually a little bit out of neutral going into extension. Uh, so we're starting to develop a little bit of a cervical curve, even, even a little bit of a lumbar curve. Now, <coughs> come up to the forearms. So forearms now, elbows under the shoulders, uh, lifting the sternum, pressing the front of the hips into the table. Now we're really developing that lumbar curve. So this, this is a great position for clients too, uh, especially after the C, the C work, when you have the client laying for long periods of time in the C position to, to get some extension into the back. So lift, lifting the sternum here uh, and, and the head getting some nice lift, pressing the hips into the table, getting uh, an increased uh, lumbar curvature, uh, even pressing the legs into the table. We're doing this on a table now. It's easier done on, on the mat, on the floor perhaps. And then you want to show position where you, you're coming out a little wider. So for some people if you want to get up a little <coughs> higher, different than a traditional cobra pose in yoga perhaps, but you have more support of your hands. So if you don't have enough back strength you can get up a little higher in, in this position here. And then from, from here, come on down, scoot forward a little bit so your feet get on the table. Uh, go back to child's pose with your toes curl under. So developing some uh, toes curl under actually, Laura. Yeah. So devel developing some curvature now in the bottoms of the feet by having the toes curl under, her sitting back on onto her heels. You know, getting a nice shoulder stretch in this position here. Uh, from from this position, uh, come up to all four and now do a cat and cow. So now we're working with pelvic tilts. We're getting a roundness on, on the exhale. Inhale, we're, we're getting an extension in the spine. So she's going back and forth, uh, cat and cow. And she has a lot of flexibility in her spine. Most of our clients don't, but this is an easy, easy position to, to work on opening the spine. Notice how she's sinking, sinking between the shoulder blades in this position. Now rounding, pulling the abdomen in, really rounding the back. Now from here, can you, you want to go into an up dog? So sort of to round first and just kind of, yeah, round your back. Now can you lower down to an up dog? Yeah, hips down and you can even flat, yeah. So she's, she's very open in the back. She can easily do an up dog. You got to have strength in the arms, you can have flexibility in the back to do this position. From here, can you go to a down dog? So curl the toes under and come, you can come down if you want, yeah. So here's the down dog position. It's a great stretch of the shoulders. Obviously not a beginner thing. You got to have enough hamstring flexibility to actually keep that curve, natural curve in the back. If the back rounds, that means you don't have enough. If there's too much flexion in the lumbar spine, uh, can you simulate that? Yeah, if somebody's like that, you're not getting a great shoulder stretch, now bend your knees. We have to bend the knees. Now she can get into to, to this uh, flex position again. Okay, go ahead and, stra and straighten your legs now. And she's very flexible, so she can easily keep this. Great shoulder stretch, great spinal stretch, uh, great stretch on the back line, hamstrings, calves, Achilles tendon. And then come on down to a regular child's pose. Now she's going to sit back with her not her toes curled under <coughs> and, and into a regular regular child's pose. So then uh, go ahead and lay on your back. So we're going from <coughs> the back extension positions uh, to now where some of the positions we're going to have more of a roundness in the back. So go ahead and bend your knees first. So we're going to feet about hip width apart uh, and we're just going to start with some easy arm <coughs> movements to open up the shoulders and arms and chest. So, so reach the arms up overhead, thumbs down toward above your head, yeah. 
And we're just going to do that about five times. So she comes down. We could do that with a breath. So like you could inhale when you come up, you could exhale when you come down. Doesn't have to be that way. The, the main thing is the movement and that you're, you're taking a nice deep diaphragmatic breathing. So this expands the rib cage. Uh, we're going to check out the breath after this to see where if it's stuck anywhere, if it's open, what's expanding. And then we can switch the hands. So now <coughs> put the palms down and then reach the back of your palms overhead. So that changes the stretch a little bit. Uh, perhaps involves the lats a little more. But it's a different type of, of arm position we can do. And we'll do that one more time. And then bring it down. So if you're doing a little movement session <coughs> after your structural integration session, this, this is a great thing to do. Now we want to check the breath as she's in this position. Uh, we like diaphragmatic breathing where the diaphragm domes downwards and allows for an expansion in the abdomen. We also would like to see a little bit of an expansion in the rib cage up towards the clavicles. We want to see a side to side movement and she has all of those. So a little bit of expansion to the side as she inhales. Uh, we can't see the back so much but we like to feel an expansion in the back side. It's a three dimensional breath. Uh, so we, we want to see it on all sides of the body. Now <coughs> we'll continue on with some chest openers here. So we started working with the breath. So keep that breath. Bring, bring your elbows and your palms together like so and then open the chest and do that a few times. So again, we're, we're working with active movements. This can be done against the wall as well. Just moving up and down on the table, really expanding that chest. For some people, this is quite of a stretch. The, move, the active movement is, is important that we're keeping it slow, engaging without being too tight. And then um, from here, bring your elbows and hands down uh, on, on the table like so. This is the angel wings position. So now slide up and down. <coughs> so this is a great way of engaging the lower trapezius, which is a hard muscle to get to engage. So she's pinning the lower tips of her scapulas together. This opens the chest, but it also engages the muscles in the back, as, as did this position, getting some rhomboid action going. As, as well, but this one really focuses on, on lower trapezius versus upper trapezius. So keep the, keep the upper trapezius as relaxed as possible, but engage the lower trapezius, which is at the inferior angle of your scapulas. Good, and then bring your hands all the way down your sides. Now, we're going to start going into some core exercises. Um, bring your hands on your knees, like bring your knees up, hold on to your knees. So now we, we want the legs to be heavy. We want that feeling of heaviness there. So that you start feeling your abdominal muscles engage, particularly transverse abdominis. The, the movement now on an inhale, Laura's going to bring her hands overhead. She's going to press her feet up into the ceiling and even, yeah, even further in and then exhale, come back down. So heaviness in the legs. You can even keep these up, yeah. So you want a 90 degree angles. And again, straighten the legs and arms. So this is the movement. For some people, this is a core exercise. For Laura, this is easy. But for some people, this is like beginning of, hey, get some core strength without having to do crunches, which is not really healthy for, for your spine. Good. So now <coughs> bring your hands to your sides again, but keep your legs this way. So when you keep this 90 degree angle in the knees, this is the, the dead bugs pose. So now I don't want you to go all the way down, but kind of explore what, one leg at a time though. Yeah, so just a little bit and then come in, even less than that. I just want you to kind of just to reach out with that left leg now. Yeah, and back in. Yeah, just small movements. So this, and, and focusing on, on the abdominals, of keeping a flat spine, 
uh, engaging the core and she's going all the way out. For some people, it's just a little bit of movement here will engage the core. You know, we'll get that beginning of core strength that we're looking for in our clients. That, that's what I, what I see the most that clients are, are lacking is the core strength. And when we start doing our deep psoas work and so on, we really want them to have some core strength. Now, let's do um, one arm, one leg, so opposite. Yeah, so that's a little more advanced. We can do this with a breath as well. You know, inhale as you reach out, exhale as you come back in. So she's going back and forth now. <coughs> and, and by involving the arm, we get a little oblique action going here as well. So that's important. You know, so if you want to push it a little more, uh, this is the next step. And then arms down by your sides again. And uh, now we're going to, so the core is not just your abdominals. You know, your spine is part of the core. So now we want to engage the backside. <coughs> we also want to strengthen the hamstrings and the glutes. So bend your knees. So that's, that's part of the backline strengthening. We've done some frontline strengthening of the core. We want to do the backline core. So now come up into half bridge. She's pressing her feet into the table. She's tucking her tailbone under. She's coming up one vertebra at a time. She's pressing her shoulders into the floor. She's pressing even the back of her head into the floor. Now she's going to come down from the upper vertebrae, just peeling one vertebrae down at a time. The last thing that comes down is the sacrum, the tailbone. And then do that one more time. So she starts from the sacrum as she comes up. Look, she does a really good job of coming one vertebra at a time. That's a flexible spine. <coughs> and then coming down slowly on, on the exhale. So you can lift on the inhale, you can come down on the exhale. Good. Now, if, we, if we're looking at, some people cannot tuck the tailbone under. They can't go into posterior pelvic tilt. So if you just do, don't come all the way up, but just lift up a little bit. She's reaching through the knees and then come down. So just work in that posterior tilt if you don't feel it. This is a good position to do that in. Okay, and then bring your knees to chest. So bringing both knees to chest you know, after that position is good. It rounds, it flexes the lumbar spine. And from this position, <coughs> we're going to see if she can bring her forehead up towards her knees very easily. You know, some people can't get that close. But this is a good position uh, as well. And, and you can bring the head back a little. Maybe can you roll up and down just a little bit? Yeah. So she can easily do a roll, but from this position, yeah, we can do a spinal roll uh, very easily and then come up to seated. Uh, and she can, she's got a very strong core, so she can come up in this position right away. So here is, is more of a boat pose. This is also an abdominal strengthener. Now show the beginner version of this. So, so Laura, you want to explain the, the beginner Just version of this one? Up spine. I'm getting that V-sit position, so your spine's engaged. Um, nice and long, belly drawn in and up, and then just lean back. You can hold on behind the thighs, maybe out to the side, palms down, palm up, whatever feels comfortable. But keeping that anchor through the feet and that V-sit position between the thigh and the torso, just leaning back with a nice straight spine, chin slightly tucked, shoulders back and away. Good, and do you want to do the one where you're lifting up just a little bit? Yes, maybe some people on boat like to keep the anchor, or you can lift one foot and then draw it back in, lift the other, hands can stay as an assist. You might choose to start drifting or floating on your boat, maybe tapping one foot then the other. Some people like to row, some people like to widen out. It just depends on That's what more you advanced. Like to do on your boat. Yes. Yes. Very good. So come to butterfly with your feet together. So to me that that's a good transition out of that boat position, uh, getting a little bit of a adductor stretch, a little bit of a groin stretch. She's holding on to her ankles. She's lengthening her spine. Sometimes people just collapse into this, but she's lengthening her spine, moving her knees down towards the table. And now, with a straight spine, she can go forward just a little bit. Yeah, and she has quite a bit of flexibility. So with a straight spine, we go forward. We, we get a little bit of a low back stretch. It's a good table to hold on to. But also opening the adductors, the groin, in this position and then, then come back up and hold on to your 
ankle. So even just holding on to the ankles, lengthening the spine all the way up to the top of the head as you're moving those knees down towards the floor. No, no, stay, uh, stay straight up, yeah. Try to lengthen the spine as much as you can and move the knees down towards the table. Even this position, for her, is not that much of a stretch, but for some people, this is a really, really nice groin stretch and, and a spine stretch, actually. And then from here, uh, let's go into a cross-legged forward bound. <coughs> so we, we want to look into, yeah, just do easy. And, and bring that foot out just a little bit in front, yeah. So we want to look into well, what's an easy forward bend uh, that you can do. So she's going to go into forward bend with both legs crossed. This gets, gives a great stretch for the lumbar spine. Um, and, and it's safe. You know, safer than maybe a straight-legged forward bend. All of that could be done as well. Uh, we should also, you know, switch the, you don't have to do that, but we should switch the feet around. You can, you can move to side position as well, if you come down into it again. And then she's going to walk her hands to one side, so we get more, uh, more of a side stretch into the back, you know, very easily done. But th this is a great position, uh, even people with low back pain, sometimes this could be very good uh, of just walking into it. And then uh, slowly come, come on up, and we'll do, let's do the, um, the pigeon pose. So come, come on this side of the table, I think it's good. <coughs> so now, uh, we've talked about external rotation of the hips, so Laura's going to show the pigeon pose. Uh, this stretches the piriformis muscle. We s she starts upright, she goes forward, but now it's like, can you find the sticky point? You know, can you find the area where it feels tight? It could be different for somebody else. And, and then maybe hold it there, you know, or maybe keep switching positions. But this, this is a great way to get some external rotation uh, in the hip uh, in various positions. And I like the, this table position here. It could be done on the floor, but for a beginner, that's tough. For a beginner, it's very difficult to do. But pretty much anybody can do something like this. Or you can do it seated in a chair with, with putting one leg up and doing exactly the same thing she's doing. Uh, but this, this, is, this gives you more performance stretch when you use a table to put your leg up on. And, and here's the traditional position would, would be an upright. So you can do forward bends or you can do upright. You can walk side to side. So just a couple of movement tips uh, from Synergetic Structural Integration. I'm here with Laura. Thank you.